Hey there, thanks for joining me for part two editing in On One Photo Raw 2024. This is the second part. Before we get started, a few quick housekeeping items. First, one of the comments was that it was hard to see where my mouse was, so I'm trying a new mouse highlighter. So let me know how that works in the comments below. Also, when I was showing you how I go through and make my selections or get the ones to delete the not used photos, I was showing you if you use the arrow key, arrow key, arrow key, and then if I didn't like one, I would hit the X key and nothing happened and then you'd have to hit the arrow key to advance well big shout out or big thank you to huey pointing out that there is an auto advance in photo raw so let me show you that we're gonna get back here and if you go down to the drop down menu in photo and select auto advance if you label a color give it stars heart it or give it an X like what we were doing, it will automatically advance to the next image, saving you a keystroke. So let's see how that works. Like if we give a five star, see how it automatically went to the next image. It works also if we're in full frame mode. So here's an image. I'm going to just hit the X key and it automatically advanced the very next frame. So no longer arrow key X, arrow key to advance you can just hit the X and it will automatically advance to the next image. So this is arrow key. Now we'll just hit X and it advanced. X, it advanced. X, it advanced. X, it advanced. All right, so let's get into editing. So one thing that's always important is always to review your images, look for what you could improve, things like that. One thing I noticed looking back on this is when I was doing the running shots of Abby, I had a thousand shutter speed, which is fine. My ISO was probably on auto ISO and that's the ISO that it picked. But once Abby sat down, there was no need to still be at a thousand shutter speed because she wasn't moving. And look at the ISO bumped up to 3600. So there's going to be noise in that image. Not a big problem. I <laughs> don't mind some noise. I think it gives it a more film-like view. But if that was a problem, I really should have dropped the shutter. So if I dropped it down to 500th of a second, I would save a stop of light. And that would take my ISO down as well to 1800 and then I could go down 250th and that would still freeze motion of any motion of a sitting dog like that and now I'm basically at 800 ISO so big improvement and definitely something I will be looking at in the future during my next shoot of Abby the Wonder Doc. So I went through all these different images. One I really liked was number 56. And I want to show you a couple ways you can go about editing. One cool thing about On1 2024 is the ability to have versions. So just because you have one look, you can try different looks. You could do black and white, you could do sepia, you could go back to the natural state. And that's what we're gonna do here. So right click on the image, go up and create a version. It just makes a duplicate copy of that. And when you do this, it's not duplicating the image, so it's not gonna take up a lot of storage space. It's just making a little uh, file an on one file now that the file is duplicated we can right click on it and go up to reset settings and then click ok and now we have the original image so let's open this up the first place i start with is in the develop module we're going to close the side tab we can always get back to that just give us a little bit more space and the way that you get to develop is file and edit and develop or what i use is the shortcut letter d so i'm just going to hit the letter d on the keyboard 
and it's going to open up in develop and this is where I would start. There is the new Brilliance AI. I prefer to go in and manually do it, but you can play around with AI and see how you like what on one comes up with. So looking at this exposure, it is just a little bright. I'm going to bring it down just a hair and that's looking really good. So now let's analyze the image and see what we like, what we don't like, what we'd love to change about this. Overall, I think it's pretty good. I mentioned the problem with the ISO and the shutter speed combination. It definitely could have brought that down and had less noise in the image. And you can see the noise in the image that I was referring to. And again, to me, it's more film-like. It's not a major issue, but if it does bother you, again, I should have handled that better during the initial capture. But on one does have noise and sharpening correction. And if we take a look at that and we do no noise AI, you can see that it cleans up the image very well. Okay, so let's use it for this example and go back to the color and tone and I'm going to do command zero to zoom out. The zoom features are also under view so you can zoom in with command or control equal sign, zoom out, command control minus sign or the different ones to fit to actual size and zoom in to 100%. So this is where it gets really fun in the edit. Once you have the image looking pretty much how you like it, exposure wise, the base settings of the image in the develop mode under tone and color, now you get to decide how you want to enhance and edit the image. Let's go down to the panels. I'm gonna bring this out. And there are so many different ones here on the left hand side that are already pre-made presets that you can just open up and apply. So we could go to say the adaptive presets. We could do outdoor portraits since it's an outdoor portrait. We can click on the four square icon and make those images really big so we can see what they're looking like and see if any of those are something that we like. And the little kick is really nice. One click, it went from here to here, which is really nice. And the neat thing about this is you can look and see what exactly little kick did. So if we go into local adjustments, there weren't any, but if we go into effects, they added dynamic contrast. So if we go on and off, you can see it was added to the whole scene and there was a tone enhancer. And if you click on that, you'll see what it did. It kind of deepened the shadows a bit. Very nice look. The neat thing about this though is you can customize these. You could reduce the amount, or in this case, what I really like is what it's doing to Abby, the sharpness that it's applying, but I don't really think we need it on the grass as well. So let's just click on the white mask icon. This masking window properties will come up region. We're going to click on the drop down, and we're going to paint in on just the animal and hit apply. And now that sharpening is not a f sharpening the grass. It's only sharpening Abby. If we look at before and after the grass is still not sharp, but Abby does have that sharpness added. Awesome way to use presets and edit. Let's look at another way that we can edit images in on one. And I'm going to reset this with the exposure. The way that I approach editing is to start here in the develop tab. Step one is going up to camera profile and picking a proper camera profile, not just the generic one. And all of these are listed. I have a video on how you can make sure your camera profiles are there as well. 
and these are made specifically from Adobe for your camera and on one is able to use those looking at standard or looking at vivid and portrait I like the standard one for this one next we'll look at exposure I want to make sure my shadow and highlight alerts are active and the way you do that is alt J so if we look at here in the upper right window for the levels we'll see that they're grayed out if we do the alt J they highlight and what that means is if the blacks are too deep have these blue highlight warnings so I'm going to dial those back until they're just barely there just in the deepest parts so we have it just a touch in the eye and a little bit underneath her ear a little bit in her nostril those are going to be pure black in the print next you could do the same with the whites I'm going to leave those alone because those are pretty good my exposure actually is already a little bright so we're going to bring this down just a touch and that is looking awesome. So the next thing is let's analyze the image, see what we want to do. I did like the dynamic contrast of that one preset uh, to sharpen up Abby, but we're going to make sure we don't apply it to the background. But the biggest problem for me with this image is the winter lawn here in Arizona. So that's rye grass and that's an accurate color representation of it. It is kind of nuclear looking. So I want to be able to tone that down. I think when we're looking at this image, I see so much green and we're losing focus of Abby. So we'll address that as well while we're editing. And that's the whole point of editing, looking at the image, deciding what you like and what you want to change. Another thing that bothers me a little bit is just this little area up here. And that's a quick and easy fix. The shortcut is just the letter Q. It's going to bring up our retouching tools. Let's just go over this. And it's going to pick an area. And for this, you have to really make sure you pick something on that same line so the focus is right for that so let's take a look at something like that that's looking really nice and we'll hit the check mark at the very top and lock that change in all right so we got that taken care of next let's go into effects and let's work on that grass color so we're going to do a color adjustment We'll click on add filter, go down to color adjustments. We want to work on the greens and let's play around with the hue. So that's a little bit worse and that kind of lightens it up. So that's looking, getting it a little bit more yellow instead of green. It doesn't compete quite as much. So that's looking good. We can also reduce even the saturation a bit of that. And finally, brightness, we can darken that a bit. All right, so we can click on the blue ball and see whether we like that change and that's looking a little better. Next, let's have another filter. This time we'll do the dynamic contrast. And again, that applied it to everything and we don't wanna do the grass. We're gonna click on the mask icon go down to where it says region and all we are going to select animal and paint in because that's where we want the sharpening applied hit apply and perfect now we just have the sharpening on abby looking good we will go next add another filter and then yeah this will draw our attention to the center of the image which is where abby is we'll do big softy and we'll just dial it back a bit but again look at each one of your filters and see what it's doing see if you like it 
see if it's helping the image or hurting the image because we can always reset it or just remove it by clicking on the X. But I like what that's happening. Next, let's look at different LUTs. This is the color grading part. Go down to LUTs and I'm going to under categories, look at color grading and just see if there's one that we really like that enhances this image. So we'll click down here and we can just use our down arrow key or up arrow key once we have one highlighted from this drop down menu and it will cycle through all the different ones. That one's really nice. That one's really good. And that one is killer. Let's just see what else is there. Nice. So all this is personal taste, unless you choose this one because now we're just that nuclear green again. But other than that one, you can go through and pick your favorite one. I know my favorite is Elton. So I'm going to select that by clicking on it and then looking at the image one more time. Just want to see what it would look like if the background is just a little bit darker. See if that draws us into Abby a little bit more. So for that, we're going to jump into local. We don't even have to click on local. We can use the new super select AI tool, which is the letter K for the shortcut. So once we're in super select, we can click on what we want to do. And in this case, I want to darken the background. So I'm going to click on the background, select that and click on these areas as well. Now all I have to do is right click, select adjustment. We want exposure negative and that's looking really awesome. And for that, we could back off just a little bit. We can also modify that mask. So if we want it feathered, so it's just a little bit blended. That looks great like that. So we went from here, look at the Do nuclear not. green that is just burning our eyes to this, which is just an amazing shot of Abby. Beautiful look. Very happy with this edit. So showed you two different ways. You could do presets, which is a great way to get started. Fun way to learn too, because you can look at what the presets did, decide whether that's something you like or don't like, tweak any of those settings. You can even save those. Even here, we can go up to the top, go to settings, save settings as a preset so we could use this on an another project so the next time we photograph a cat and <laughs> we want to have the same look we can easily do it but i'm going to hit the check mark in the bottom right corner hit apply also what's really neat with on one we can select other images be sure to highlight the one that we want to use right click on that and say sync all settings and it's going to give you the same look that with everything applied that we just did so an awesome way to edit images in on one photo raw 2024 if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below i do answer them all thanks so much for taking the time to join me today i hope you did get some value out of this video if you did please like and subscribe till next time keep shooting